Hey guys, um, as you can see I'm working on an ear today. I've pretty much created this just by relieving the background and, and leaving this shape here, you know, very similar on the other side. <coughs> um, I've been working on the, uh, we'll call this the, hor the uh, vertical side of it with a uh, Fordham bit, this one here just to try and keep it straight and kind of start to get some shape uh, and this side of the ear, let's see if you can see that, yeah you can, is um, pretty much vertical and then excuse me um, I've used this bit here To recess the ear back here to make it stand out. So we've got a bit of an angle here. Let's see if you can see that. So it's recessed so that it stands out. I've gone pretty much as far as I can with this bit. So uh, I may be, uh, and I don't really have uh, anything that'll take it from there. There is one possibility. I've got a cuts all that uh, problem is it's real aggressive. Maybe I'll get a silver cuts all, but that has a little bit more, uh, a little bit steeper angle, and I may be able to recess that a bit more. Otherwise, uh, good old manual carving tools. And you know, I, I prefer working with the manual gouges, but. Uh, that is uh, a really a sure thing, you know. The actually the ear guides the uh, the bit so that um, I like it because it's kind of automatic. Um, I'm gonna start taking this down, this front part of the ear. Um, you know, it's a it's a fantasy ear. It's not a real ear, but I think that in order for a a uh, fantasy or a creative creature um, to work, I've pretty much got to um, have uh, a good solid base in reality and then just, you know, we're so used to the human form that if you depart from it just slightly, um, you get a, a better effect that way. So I've got, uh, you know, what's becoming my favorite gouge, I've been using this quite a bit, is the uh, 520. Is that upside down? Yeah. It's the 520. It's a fairly gentle profile. Um, like I say, I've owned this gouge for a long time, so I've had a lot of time to to work on the uh, taper so that it's nice and uh, nice and long. Uh, the Swiss tools are real good steel, so I can get away with a nice long taper there. Normally, uh, working in a hard wood like this, I would want maybe more bluntness uh, to bolster the edge, to reinforce the edge to keep it sharp, but uh, the steel on these is excellent, so I, I get away with murder. So let me take a few exploratory, uh, see if the wood's going to let me do what I want to do. Looks good. I'm always happy when I see that uh, shiny smooth. What I get with this wood, okay, it's going to do it here, and I'll show you that. Uh, what I get when it doesn't want to do what I want is a kind of a roughness. It's not too bad here, but I can tell when I'm uh, when it's telling me I'm going the wrong way. Uh, so this is the direction that it wants to head, and that's kind of why I've got it propped at such a, a crazy angle. Um, I think back and maybe down are what the wood wants at this point. So I'll do this pretty gradually in stages. I want to leave enough for uh, some ear holes. I could feel it biting there that uh, it was going to take off a chip. So I want to be slicing at this point. And I think slicing down is the way to go. I could slice down or I could slice up. 
Yeah, it'll do it up, but I think that I get a little better control down. So I will take probably the front third, maybe the front quarter of this ear down to within probably a sixteenth of an inch of the head. And what I'm wanting to do is get a, um, let me show you a picture on one of the books that I'm, I'm working from. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Yeah, this is uh, Carving the Head in the Classic European Tradition by Geisler Mortar. It's Austrian. But uh, when I look at that ear that he's carved right there, let's see how close we can get. Right there. Um, you see how it's it pretty much emerges, the rear part emerges, and the front part, um, it slants and tapers back this way. So, um, I'm going for probably a similar effect on this, that it will emerge from the side of the head at the beginning, and then I will continue to work the back of the head back. There's some of that roughness, if you can see that. That was telling me, uh, in fact, on the other side was where I busted out that chip in the other video. But that roughness is telling me it does not like the direction that I'm going. I wonder if down. No, down is what it does not like. So, you know, at best, straight back is what the grain seems to want. And I will continue to work this down. I left myself a good bulk on the head so that, that I could do that, so that these features could emerge. And uh, so I'm going to keep working this ear. This is one of those places I can't carve any wood back on, so I'm going to do it gradually. I'll carve it for a while and then look at it and try and decide if. I want to pursue this line further. I think you get away with murder when you're coming into an edge like that. If I was coming this way, I'd be a lot more nervous that I'd get tear out. It could give way at any second because I'm pushing the edge. Whereas this way I'm pushing into the edge. So. I'm liking it so far. I'm going to have to reset this and uh, at least get it flat. So I've got a pretty long way to go to to remove material on either side of it so that the wing tip of the ear stands out. Um, I'm going to want to be at an angle almost like that. So in order to do that, I've got to remove everything behind it to make it do that. And it's kind of dicey back there, so I know I can do it. I want to do it cleanly. One of the things I'm finding with this wood, you know, when you're working with a whole log, there's, you know, it's, it's pretty much a uh, mission of discovery because you, at no point do you know how the grain is going to work. You know, different features even behave differently and different depths. You know, with this wood, it's not a kiln dried wood. I just dried it here in the apartment. I, uh, I cut the wood into big squares. Probably I'll show you the big cubes and uh, painted the ends uh, and, and got very little checking. So I'm pretty grateful for that. But with these various steps, 
You know, I'm, I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to relieve it back here. Like I say, I've left myself a lot of mass, and it's a fantasy head. It's not a human head. So, um, actually, the this at this point, it's a little too normal. So any weirdness that I can carve into it's going to be a benefit. And if I have to do some, uh, you know, some weird indents or lobes in the back to get the ear to stand out the way I want. Uh, I think that uh, that's going to be a nice balance. I'm seriously considering, um, like I say, I've got two more blocks like this. I'm seriously considering uh, a big set of wings for the back. You know, that's almost another big project on its own, and I've been working on this one forever. I, you know, I, I start it and you know lose interest and come back to it. Uh, once I got the Fordham. That really allowed me to uh, get into some of the deep recesses that I needed to. That I, you know, I'd pretty much come to a, a standstill with the gouges. I'd gotten as deep as I could. You know, it's uh, it's a good eight, maybe nine inches from the edge of the wood to the where his uh, crotch would be, probably back here. So that's really deep and I, I couldn't get it any other way than motorized and probably the Fordham was the only thing that was going to be strong enough to get there. One of the things that I've kind of learned not to do especially in the head area where every every feature is critical and every stroke uh, can be a mistake is um, uh, not get too addicted to pushing the gouge through the wood. You know that can really be I can really get lost in the carving process and uh, go deeper and remove more stuff than I wanted to. So uh, I kind of make myself stop even when it's going smooth like this. Just to reevaluate, you know, work on something else, some other part of the carving or some other doodad and uh, give this time to incubate. Because also with an ear, you know, like with eyes, you got two and they've got a match. So I'll do maybe another 30 second of an inch here. I'm also liking the flattening that I'm getting. You know, it's definitely bringing the ear down to uh, the point where the uh, the tip, the wing tip, is going to start protruding and, and that's what I want. And I don't think you need very much for that. I think that you can communicate that with just the slightest rise away from the head and away from the ear. That it's kind of like, you know, the ears standing out. I'm comfortable with it. Uh, in this book I was showing you, he actually takes it flat here, and I may be able to do that. But I'm still going to want to um, somehow communicate that this is where the year starts. So uh, we'll see how that works. I've got some clay. I may try and uh, model it in clay, but uh, I think that's probably it for now. I'll do a couple of quick uh, sweeps with the uh, reciprocal Fordham. I'm continuing to work this neck back. Um, when I when I work a piece like this, you know, and I know that I want this to stand out, so I've got to take this back. In order to take this back, I've got to take this back. Um, I'll usually give myself a lot of room in the deepest recess because this depends on it, this depends on it, this de and that provides it. So uh, let me tape over the microphone so it's not too loud. I can. And I'll just run this and call it a day. Thanks for watching.